In this video, I want to review a unique part of AutoCAD. In AutoCAD, there's two essential modes of viewing your drawing. You have the model space, where you actually come in and do your modeling and your line work and your dimensions. And then you also have your paper space that has a white background where you can actually prepare your drawings that you've modeled in the model space for printout into PDF or into a digital copy of the file that you can send on to somebody else. However, how does this relate to total stations and why is this important? Well, sometimes what happens is your drafter or the person that's compiling your drawings is going to send you a PDF version of whatever is in paper space mode. When in reality, when you're working with a total station, it's best if you're working with the actual model so that the tool can find line work and arcs and circles, etc. So it's important that they clean up the model space drawing and send you the DWG rather than the file that's been exported as a PDF. That's one aspect of how it relates to total stations. Another aspect in how it relates to total stations is sometimes you're going to receive a model from the drafter that's going to have several different versions of a drawing onto one plan. For instance, in this case, we have roof plan, floors 8 to 15, floor 7, 6, etc. You have several different in the model space, and then the drafter conveniently went ahead and put them all in paper space to print out each one individually. Now, why does, does this relate to total stations? Well, for total station use, it's nice to have one individual plan per file that you're using. You're not going to lay out all seven floors at once. You're going to lay out floor by floor by floor. So if your general contractor or your supervisor says, hey, we need you to lay out floor LS102 or LS103, you can skip through these paper space names to find out where that version of the drawing is, go back to model space, and export just that one drawing that you need. That's another way that paper space and model space intercorrelate with each other. In this video, I'm going to try to keep it simple and give you examples of how sometimes you'll see the paper space and model space interact together. And so for the first example, I'm going to keep it extremely simple. Let me keep on this file. Let's say your general contractor comes to you and they say that they need you to lay out LS102 the next day. They give you the file where LS102 is, you open it up, and this is what you see on your tablet. And your job is to find LS102. And for whatever reason, you're searching in this model space for it, and you cannot find anything that says LS102 on it at all. So one strategy of what you can do is you can just simply go down, look at these tabs down here, and you can see that these can go on forever and ever. These are all the paper space drawings that the drafters prepared for you. Find the LS102 drawing, open it up in paper space, and bingo, you know that this is the one you need. The only problem is that you need to export just this into an AutoCAD DWG file type and put on your total station. And you need to find this out on your model space plan. That's kind of hard to do. Well, let me show you what's going on here. In paper space, you can actually double click in the modeling area. So now that I double clicked in here, if I draw a line, let me use the line command to show you. I'm going to use the L command. I'm going to just draw a simple line from left to right at the top of this drawing. I'm going to press escape. This line is now going to show in my model space. All I'm looking for now is the model that has that green line at the very top of it. And bingo, it's right here. That line right there that I drew. So I know that this drawing is the LS102 plan. Now I know that this is the model I need to export. I can simply delete that green line and now W block out only this drawing and put it onto my tablet. My previous videos have gone over W block and the advantage of it, but just to remind you, W block saves whatever you have highlighted as its own drawing. So as you noticed, I highlighted this drawing. That's what I want to save. I W block it out. That's the only object. Those are the only objects that are going to be saved in its own drawing file. I can take it, put it on my tablet, and that's all I'm going to see rather than the rest of the drawings in this model. So I hope that makes sense of the correlation between model space, where you draw your model, and then, of course, paper space, where you come in and prepare it for printout. Now let me go into another example that's a little bit interesting. Sometimes drafters are going to send you the DWG file, and you're going to open it up. You're going to see nothing in it, and it might shock you. They say, hey, here's the model. You need to pull drawing number A201 from it, and you're like, okay, well, I don't see anything in the model space. What are you supposed to do? 
Well, what sometimes happens is drafters, they actually use paper space to do a lot of their modeling for whatever reason. There's, there could be many reasons. So they say that you need A201. So you say, well, I don't see A201 in here, but you do notice down in the paper space tabs, there's an A201 right here. Let's go ahead and open this up. The drafter seemed to have done their modeling within paper space. Each paper space has its own version of the model ready for printout. And you can see right here, it's called A201. So what do you do in this case where you can't easily take this DWG file and put it onto a tablet? If I save this as a DWG, all I'm gonna get is this blank space because the paper space objects are not part of that DWG. They're just on their individual paper spaces that have nothing to do with the model space. Well, what's really interesting about paper space is that you can always see what's in paper space, come down to the bottom tab, right click on the paper space icon you're on, and export layout to model. So let's take this A201 drawing and export this to a model. I'll call this A201 to remind myself. Now I have open A201 in model space. It's opened up on its own drawing. So if you ever are given a file where you come across this, just remember, you can always export as a model, open it up in a separate drawing, and now you can work with it in here. The only thing it's left to do is to scale it. I have other videos on how to scale, but to do it very quickly here, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I'm working in the units I wanna work with. In this case, this drawing is a millimeters drawing, so I'm gonna to switch to millimeters. I'm gonna say apply, and I'm not gonna worry about rescaling anything because it's already out of scale. Now that my units are set, I'll go ahead and find a dimension that I can identify. So grid line one to two is supposed to be 9,600 millimeters. So I'll go ahead and highlight the whole drawing by pressing control A. Type SC to begin the scale command. My base point I'll have is this grid line one. I'll click the button R to identify that I'm gonna be using a reference line length. And the line length is gonna be one to two is 9,600 millimeters. Before I press enter, just know that the dimensions as they're written are gonna change. And that's simply because I'm bringing it from a completely different scale in paper space to now in model space but I know that I'm scaling it correctly because of how I'm doing it now. So this new length is 9,600, I'll press enter. And now as I zoom out, I'll do a distance check. One to two is coming up as 9,600. And as you can tell, these dimension lines now are a little bit skawampus, they look a little bit weird, but that's just because I completely scaled it way up from how it originally brought it in from the paper space. So these dimensions, I might as well now freeze them to get them off because they're a little bit irrelevant at this point, unless you are your own modeler or you can ask your drafter to go in there and just reset them real quick for you. Either way, I now have it scaled and I'm ready to go ahead and save this or preferably double block it out, make it its own drawing and go forward. So moving on to the next example. In this example, we have an anchor bolt layout plan. And yes, there is something in model space, but let me show you what's going on. The drafter put the grid over here on the right and then modeled each individual anchor type over here on the left. And he or she did not drop it into the actual layout area. What they ended up doing was they put the model space in here and then in the layout tab for paper space, they actually overlaid everything all within here. And what you can see, let me zoom in a little bit to show you what happened. All these little squares actually represent different viewports of the model space. And so the drafter literally basically took snapshots of the model space and put it into this paper space for whatever reason. That was just more convenient for him or her. So the actual model that you need to export and put on your tablet is the one put together in paper space. So now what I can do is I can come down here to the layout tab and just like I did before, export layout to model. I'll save it as anchor layout. And now you can see I have it all ready and good to go in here where I can now scale it again and move forward just like you saw me before. Here's another example where they did the same thing modeled the grid over here. All of the anchor bolts are now to the right. I go to the layout tab and they're now put together all over here. This is a pretty simple video, not much more to it. If I was to remind you of anything, just remember if you're ever confused, especially if you get a plan that looks like this, just remember you can always go into your paper space, double click into the viewport. And now once this is showing up here at the top, you can always draw in here to help yourself identify where this drawing is located in model space. I just do that zigzag, I come back over here, I find that green zigzag, and that's the drawing they're talking about. I delete my zigzag and work with that drawing as is. 
If there's any questions, please leave them in the comments, but I sure hope this helped.